Uh, thanks for the opportunity to talk to you. Um, I, okay, we're just getting our slide up here. Uh, we, the, the whole idea about um, talking about nutrition is that it's a very modifiable factor and um, ageing is something that is upon us um, that we're not really sort of coming to grips with here in New Zealand and other parts of the world. So I'm just going to talk about this big demographic shift in ageing, what's happening worldwide. Successful ageing in the blue zones, you've probably heard about those, um, in terms of um, the, the, the areas that are very, very highly populated with centenarians. Physical function, this is what we all need to be able to do when we're older generians. How nutrition can help with the loss of um, mass, m muscle mass, um, and strength, or the, the term sarcopenia that's used in ageing. Um, what do older people eat? There's actually not a lot we know about that. The, National, the Adult Nutrition Survey in New Zealand, for example, which was last funded by the Ministry of Health 2008 through 2009, aggregated everybody over the age of 70. So we actually don't know a lot about um, the, the sort of the oldest old. Do they eat enough protein and are they well nourished? So this is just really to show that globally, um, from the year 2010 to 2050, the older adult population is going to treble. And the fastest growing group by far is the over 80 group. So that's happening throughout the world. They are the fastest growing um, demographic. Uh, worldwide, and that's happening in not only the more developing countries, but the least developing. Uh, this is our age uh, distribution um, chart here in New Zealand. Uh, perhaps the non-Maori uh, population used to look a bit more of like a pyramid previously, but you can see it's looking very, very um, rectangular. So relatively fewer uh, under 40-year-olds, a rise in the um, older adult population, of course, with the first baby boomers turning 65 in 2012. But the fast growing segment is this bit at the top, and that will happen too in other um, indigenous populations, including Māori, with um, a larger proportion of younger people in that segment than for non Māori. So I've been particularly interested in this segment, the very old, because they are the fastest growing demographic group. Um, they use in New Zealand three times the healthcare resources compared to other age groups. The, they have the highest rate of preventable, unavoidable hospital admissions, um, particularly to do with falls and fractures, osteoporosis and sarcopenia. One in ten will die and one in five will be hospitalised for cardiovascular disease during their lifetime and almost half will use residential care before death. And this is what we don't want to happen. The Ministry of Social Development have an ageing in place policy and these happen throughout the world where we're trying to keep people independently living in their own homes for as long as possible because it's a burden on older people to live in residential care, and it's a huge burden on the healthcare costs. So throughout the world, there are these segments, five segments, where people um, are, are living um, consistently over the age of 50 year, uh, 100 years. And there's some characteristics associated with those older populations. They tend to live in environments that constantly nudge them into moving without thinking about it, so that you know, they're not stuck to devices or that they're, they're, they're actually doing activity as part of their normal um, daily living. They've got a reason to get up in the morning. They have routines that shed stress. They eat their smallest meal, interestingly, in the early evening. They tend to eat a plant-based diet in these blue zone areas and they might only have meat on average five times a month. They drink uh, pretty casually with friends or food, um, belong to faith-based community, families first. These people are very interested in their ageing parents and they often live with them in their own homes. And they choose or are born into social circles that support healthy kind of behaviours. So these, these are thought to be the sort of the success features of um, successful ageing. 
So physical decline with ageing is our biggest challenge. It's about maintaining our physical function. And whenever we do research in ageing, we're looking at physical function and quality of life as our key outcomes that we're, we're trying to achieve. Now these are just cross sections of um, an abdomen and down here of um, a, a thigh. So this is the waist circumference and this is the cross section of the thigh of a 60 year old man versus an 80 year old man. And I just want you to demonstrate that what's happening is that this loss of muscle mass um, with ageing. So you can see that even though the cross section of the thigh is the same, it, it, the, their mass is filled with adipose tissue or fat. And what actually happens is within the muscle fibres, the fibres become infiltrated with fat as well, which is why we get such weakened muscles and why falls and fractures are such a problem in this age group. So um, ageing is about maintaining physical function to prevent disability and to maintain independently living in our own homes. So this is just showing this um, um, loss of muscle, uh, muscle mass and strength which tends to occur with age and tends to decline in, in sometimes um, adult life. But what we're concerned about, of course, as um, Andrea just um, illustrated to you, is that younger people with high degrees of adiposity are probably going to enter this disability threshold much, much earlier in the future, unless this global burden of obesity can be somehow arrested. So this loss of muscle mass and strength um, is accelerated by malnutrition, overnutrition and undernutrition, inactivity, redistribution of body fat, and of course the hormonal changes as we age. There is um, some evidence, um, or quite a lot of evidence, that dietary protein is protective against muscle, loss of muscle mass and strength. So this is just a trial from the large Framington study, uh, which uh, looked at protein intake and, and grip strength as a, a marker of muscle strength in 1,700 um, older people. And um, they, sh they demonstrated the higher intake of total and particularly animal protein were protective against loss of muscle strength. Um, I won't um, go into the details. So we want to know about um, older adults in New Zealand. So I'm just going to tell you a, about a study I was involved with. It started in 2008 actually and the baseline assessment was done in 2015 but it's called the LILAC study, Life and Living in Advanced Age, a cohort study. So this follows people until they die. Um, there were five centres, Takaha, Potiki, Whakatane, uh, Rotorua and, and uh, Taronga. And we had ex ex explanatory power for Māori and non-Māori. So this has uh, created a lot of international interest. Um, and we've visited them in, until um, death. And this is just a snapshot of the nutrition intake. We've looked at um, macronutrients and micronutrients in great detail. Out of the micronutrients, just for your interest, calcium, magnesium, and selenium, uh, most of the participants had intakes well under the recommended estimated average requirement for those three minerals. And there were subgroups deficient in others. But just as a snapshot, what we saw compared to what we'd seen in the younger um, sort of 70 year old population is that this group had relatively low carbohydrate as a proportion of their total energy or calories. They had a very high proportion of fat. I mean, may, maybe fat is protective. The recommendations that we have are derived from studies amino acids and nitrogen balance in younger adults. So we actually don't really know what the oldest old should be doing here. Um, but they had significantly higher proportions of fat and at the very minimum of protein that um, w was set out in the recommendations. We um, were able to show that in terms of adjusting for body weight, the intakes of protein for men and women was certainly less than the newer recommendations to preserve muscle mass and function. 
and we were able to look at food sources too. Whereas um, bread, interestingly enough, in the New Zealand Adult Nutrition Survey is the major source of um, protein in the New Zealand diet. There were segment differences where for Maori men it was um, beef and veal was the top one. Um, for um, uh, sorry, Maori men it was seafood and beef, um, non Maori uh, beef and veal, bread for Maori women, and milk um, was the highest contributor for non Maori women. So, quite different sort of eating patterns. We're able to later um, describe that the low protein intake we saw in uh, Māori um, was associated with hospitalisation due to infection. So we're able to follow up um, and look at that. And we're actually just in the process of publishing work on muscle mass at grip strength. Just for your interest, um, I thought you'd be interested in just the, the latest work that's showing very clearly that it's not what we eat, but it's how we eat. That we can maintain um, a higher protein synthesis by spreading protein evenly throughout the day. So this is typically what uh, we do in westernised countries, have most of our protein at, at dinner. But if we can spread it out, we're going to maximise our protein synthesis, muscle mass and strength. Now just a snapshot, are New Zealanders well nourished? And this is, this is not just in New Zealand, it's throughout the world. We've, I've been doing a lot of work showing, using a validated tool that a lot of New Zealanders in the community, and particularly at early admission to hospital and early admission to residential care, are at high risk of, of malnutrition. Um, if we just look at the bottom two, two lines here, this is, this is the tool measuring at risk of malnutrition, and this is the totally malnourished. In this community study, which was very small, um, we've we beef this up to 250 participants um, in each um, segment, but it's not published yet. Very small incidence. But at early admission to hospital, there's a huge proportion, about 80% of these older adults at risk or malnourished. And most of older adults admitted to re residential care in the first few days are malnourished or at high risk. Um, half of them are malnourished. We've also looked at this in the, um, the lilac study, and in this study, 38% of community living older people um, in this study were at high risk of malnutrition. For Maori, it was high, it was 49%. So we know that there is a lot of malnourishment in this um, older age group. So just thinking about this, the current approach, there are social interventions such as cooking classes. There's a big program called Senior Chef that runs throughout New Zealand that through screening and identifying those at risk, they're invited to a six-week cooking program. But interestingly, the benefit out of that has been the social interaction. Um, and we know that social interaction is really important. What people like about Meals on Wheels coming to the house is not the meal, but the person coming and knocking on their door. Because eating is facilitated by companionship as a social event. Um, the uh, um, supplements that are available are doing a great job. Um, these um, products are available, uh, Pharmac funded in the community. Um, a lot of adults don't really want to take a supplement, but they, they do a great job at the same time. Um, and there are new products being developed. This new one is being um, trialled at the moment in New Zealand. It's a Fortisip compact protein, but it has 18 grams in 125 mils. So it's a really, really compact source of nutrition. And these are nutritionally complete products, but they are imported and uh, they, they're, they're extremely um, effective, but in some cases it's just not what older adults are looking for. So what's the challenge? The challenge, I don't know, there is an opportunity, however, probably for new categories of food to service this growing population. Um, foods that somehow fulfill the social facilitation that's so important important in this age group and that can make a difference, that it delivers high energy, high protein 
and um, is kind of a shared food that people find acceptable. It goes beyond supplements. Um, and maybe uh, you'd be interested to know that in um, rest homes in the US, they're 3D printing food in the facility to fulfill the need of people who have soft diets. And what they do is they mimic the shape of normal sort of protein type foods. So I don't know, but um, I think that um, it's great that you're all here and um, Andrea's got some great ideas, but maybe you'd like to think about this really very fast developing market of older adults throughout the world and think about consumers wanting to look after their aged parents and the healthcare system trying to keep people living in their own homes, healthy and functionally able. Thank you very much.